Hi everyone, I want to chat about my BRS parachute install for my Cignet aircraft here and talk about some of the things I did a little differently uh, than some others have done. So let's jump right in. All right, so um, for the most part, when folks um, install a BRS on their Cignet, and in general, I think most of us, or uh, up to this point, have not installed a parachute on the Cignet, mainly for the reason is that probably most of our flying is below 200 to 300 feet, which is the effective height that a parachute would work since we're flying low over the water or things like that. So, you know, that's initially, I think when I had my first Cignet, uh, one of the main issues for not getting a parachute was weight. Um, with my weight plus a passenger and a parachute and full tank of gas, I could take up someone who maybe is 180 pounds, but not much more. But with the, with the new airplane, certainly weight is not an issue uh, with that. Um, but really, for me, probably that 25% of flying, you know, 500 feet, 1,000 feet, um, was worth it for me to get. Uh, here in the Outer Banks where I live, there are some F-15s that sometimes fly really low and really fast. And if I ever got caught in a wake, you know, maybe it would be a, something would happen. So again, peace of mind a little bit. Um, it's all for us to decide whether it's worth the cost to do it. But anyway, so let's jump into what I did. So normally, I think a lot of folks who have installed their BRS put the BRS canister right here above the passenger seat. So parachute canister with a rocket is located there. And the nice thing about that is it's out of the splash zone and stays dry uh, in that area. I think some of the downsides about that install is one, it's in the, it's in the wind stream, so maybe a little bit more drag. Um, and also it's adding to a higher center of gravity of the airplane by having that 25 to 30 pound extra weight uh, a little bit higher up there. For me, actually, one of the main reasons why I can't mount it up there is when I fold up the, uh, the wings and drop the wing down into the, um, into the holders down here, that actually uh, works fine for, if, you're, if you store your plane in the holders here, that actually works fine for uh, mounting the canister right here. But for me, I've got an eight foot garage door. And so I need to drop the wing all the way down here. When that happens, the struts actually would come in and would hit the canister if you're mounting the canister here. Perhaps you can mount it higher and kind of figure out a way there, but then at higher up, higher center of gravity, things like that. So, so that was um, kind of the three considerations for me mounting it down low. So let's kind of look at that lower install that I um, have done here. So there it is. So I've mounted in kind of more of a traditional spot where you see it on non-float trikes. Uh, canister right under the engine. And if you look here, as far as the rocket, the one uh, main issue of mounting it down low is you do have this bar here. And so you want to make sure you angle the projectile, which comes out of the rocket here at breakneck speed, that it clears everything. And so that's why I tilted the rocket 15 degrees, and that's the maximum uh, BRS allows you to um, tilt the rocket. And so now it's a clear path for coming out of the airplane and then pulling the parachute out. And so once the rocket fires, the uh, connection point goes into the parachute here, pulls the parachute out of the canister, and then the webbing uh, needs to release cleanly. So the webbing goes through here, and the challenge is was to get it around the oil canister. So what I did here is the webbing comes back around, and then I used some gas line here as a standoff, and then simply wire tied the, uh, the webbing around there, and then the webbing heads up to the carabiner there, that releases all of those wire tires break off. If the parachute does go, wraps around, and then the key is to wrap it under uh, the, uh, the wire here and up and around. If you actually put it just around here, if this fired, the webbing would actually hit here. So it's important that you route it underneath there, and then it comes back around to the top, and then there's a strap there at the hang point where it holds onto. And, so that's the main um, holding point there. 
if you had a catastrophic failure up in that area, there's also another safety, which I'll show you on the other side. So if that whole joint um, failed, there's now another safety, that loop that goes around there, goes to the carabiner, and then that comes down, that other webbing comes down here, and then wraps around the engine mount right there. Okay, so let's uh, chat about, of course, the main issue with mounting the parachute down low is splashing and water. So as you can see, I've done some modifications to prevent splashing here. My first iteration, what I did is I bought some industrial cutting board and connected the cutting board to this bracket that I made, which is about an inch and a half by an inch and a half L bracket, an aluminum L bracket, and squeezed that bracket onto the, um, the main square post heading up there and then connected in with stainless steel screws the um the cutting board and this is actually two pieces of cutting board sandwiched together and i actually used carpet tape to to uh, glue them together whereas uh, i couldn't find any other type of glue that we can you know adhere the cutting board together but carpet tape seemed to be a good solution for that so they're screwed in up here and then down here there's double-sided velcro on each side to hold it in there so it's a uh, you know, stiff enough, but flexible if water's hitting it and things like that um, from the bottom. So that prevents spray from coming up on the bottom here. When I did my first flight with this, I noticed I was getting more spray coming up through this gap here. So when you went over or you're taking off and you're going over a little chop on the water, water was jetting up through here. And I'll uh, show you a little uh, inset video of that. Um, of what happens there. Water would pop up here and then kind of mist this area or spray back here. And also it would hit the prop. So what I did is I actually took some old wetsuit uh, material, cut up a wetsuit and simply just wire tied that onto here and then took some more cutting board and put it over where the, the normally the coolers would go right here. And that prevents a little bit more uh, splash protection. So what happens is, is that water now comes up, hits the bottom of the neoprene and just slides out the side on each side. So you're not getting any of this kind of water spewing up uh, vertically and then hitting the parachute and the rocket and also the prop. So um, it'd be probably great if airtime actually maybe in their next version actually had a separate skirt that went around here to prevent splashing, not only for if someone did a parachute, but really for less water to hit the engine and the prop. So, uh, and then um, for the part of the seat um, or the saddlebag um, Velcro that normally goes up around the back there, since I have the parachute there, you can't do that. So I put some Velcro right on the cutting board there and then that secures nicely onto there. So same thing on the other side. Right here, another piece of cutting board. I had to do little cuts and things like that to make sure that the cutting board uh, fit nicely snug against um, the square tubing going upward here of the airplane and then routing everything through and making sure there's no sharp edges and cutting anything there so you can see how all that is done. And again, some more Velcro here for the saddlebag uh, piece to come across on the side. Uh, lastly is the mounting of the pull cord. And so um, here's the cord that comes around, some wire ties there, and then under the saddlebag, you can see it down here, it comes around right there and goes around the seat post there, kind of wraps around underneath here and then goes right to the front seat. And so there's the pull cord, um, which needs about 30 pounds of pull force for it to release. Uh, the last thing I had to kind of figure out here is, I'm sure if you're a signet owner, you know what happens here, is the seat when you're sitting in it starts to slide forward a little bit. Uh, there's nothing really holding it here. And so I didn't want the seat to slide forward and then kind of hit the handle. What I did uh, for that is I put some uh, uh, Velcro on the seat so now I don't get any more sliding of the seat. It stays in, in, 
it's one spot and for the velcro to adhere to the seat actually if you use some more carpet tape the double the velcro sticky side wasn't sticky enough to grab onto this material but carpet tape uh, worked well of holding the velcro into place so basic carpet tape on there and then double-sided velcro uh, throughout so now the seat does not slide forward all right so that about covers the the install I'll just kind of walk around one more time here so you kind of get a view of how things get mounted below the engine and really the last piece is the bracket here this is sold by airtime uh, and it holds the BRS parachute down there and they comes with the four screws to sandwich that bracket against the square tube of the airplane all right there you go enjoy